Hey guys, this is our trip to the bins this week on a Monday. Started off looking through this Christmas box and found a couple vintage ornaments. And the ironic thing is I got distracted. I set these down as I sorted for more and I got distracted and forgot to pick them back up. So I actually ended up leaving those. Um, and I also... Uh, forgot to look at that stained glass lampshade. I actually was considering that as well, and then I got distracted uh, by the box behind it, briefly looking through it. But then I saw this box of Christmas Village houses and toys, and so I got a little distracted, and then <laughs> I just forgot. And this happens frequently. This bin was full of a, a hodgepodge of different things, as normal, but things that kept I guess, catching my attention, and I wasn't really prepared for that. Um, so yeah, so I left those back there. But I did find this picture. really liked it. It is a print. It's not an original oil painting. Um, so then I kind of look through, looking for some Fisher-Price little people. Go to the next bin, and this has some uh, different glassware items in here and uh, let me take a number look at that. I like dogs better than people some days it can be like that for sure um, and those are a pair of shoes back there and I thought, oh a bunch of dishes wrapped up so let me see what's in here um, and I on the bottom of this vase it says made in Japan so I was like ooh I bet there's a lot of vintage stuff and you'll see one item that I pulled out of that box here we are at the shoes. I thought I'd give you a glimpse of the shoe bins, which are always pretty full. You have to sort through and find <laughs> pairs because they're typically not together. Um, so yeah, so this is what you do. You just dig through tons of shoes. It can take a while to find matches for sure. Then I'm over at the books, going through the books. I really didn't find... And you'll see in the haul portion of this video that I did find um, a couple children's books and uh, one uh, antique book that um, I still have to do more research on. But we'll talk about that in the haul video. So I'm just going through here looking for any good vintage or antique books. Um, there wasn't much today in any of the bins as far as old books. They are almost all new books relatively new as in the last 30 years so more holy humor I was almost bought this one <laughs> but I didn't I left it I'm like I have so many books to read right now that I don't need any additional for my personal collection to read hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of uh, shop along video I did a little bit in the shoe department which was different um because i that's where it's kind of interesting that i find um ties and scarves they mix them in with the shoes i'm not sure exactly how that works but so i occasionally go through there if i have some extra time which i did today and um i thought too before we get into the hall i thought i'd share with you my little routine after i leave the bins i'm now in line at chick-fil-a to pick up my coffee i get an iced coffee from chick-fil-a on my way back to the shop so there you go. So here's the haul. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Clay Ramage. Yes, we have another Goodwill Bins haul today. And as you saw, we just had, uh, you know, the little shop along in my um, video on the stop. So let's just get right into this haul. Found some um, really, really good stuff. I was excited um, about what we found. And I think it'll we'll do really well with it. So one of the things I found that I was really excited about was some Christmas, vintage Christmas ornaments. Somebody tied like this raffeta to them, but there, I got two of these little rainbow ones, a set of these orange ones. These are all shiny brights. Then there's some of these striped ones. If I can get one out without breaking it. Oops, nope. Sorry, it's giving me troubles. All right. How about an indent one? And then 
one of these. So yeah, so just a nice little, and I picked up the orange ones because they're different. You don't see orange too often in these vintage ones. So I thought that was a great, great find. And um, I thought I had more. Hmm. Anyway, all right. I thought I had two boxes of, of uh, vintage Christmas ornaments, but then I found, okay, I picked up these glasses. Look at, aren't these fabulous? They're huge in one sense. So I'm going to have, uh, in the pink elephant in the next month or so, I'll have, I'm going to be setting up a whole display of sunglasses that I've been picking up. And again, they're super lightweight. So, you know, I'm hardly paying anything for them at the bins. So then I picked up some more flocked animals. There's a couple of mice. Oh, he's, his head's on backwards. It's supposed to go that way. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Oh, he's missing his tail. <laughs> One of them got lost his tail. Cat must have got it. Um, and then there's here's a smaller mouse. Three, three blind mice maybe. <laughs> Little kitty. He must have got the other mouse's tail. And then there's this horse. And I've done well with these little flocked animals for some reason. People seem to like them. I found this cabbage patch. It's one of those clip-on. You know, so she can clip on the side of your um, display or whatever. And it's made in Korea. I thought it was kind of fun. So pick that one up. Oh yes, and then there's a flocked duck. They'll need a little bit of cleaning, but that's okay. Picked up a vintage Batman uh, Batmobile. It's from 1989, DC Comics. Um, and then a, a couple souvenir spoons. This one's from Germany. This one is from Minnesota. It's, it says Bear, Minnesota in the, in the spoon. And then I found this little wooden bracelet with butterflies on it. I thought it was pretty cool. Definitely vintage. So, and then I found this bag of, oh, here's one more. And this is Oxford University. This one has a bunch of British marks on the back, hallmarks. And um, it looks like this is sterling from the marks. So, that's exciting. But yeah, some vintage Viewmaster, the viewer, and the, some vintage reels. This is Bo Peep to Cat the Fiddle. I'm just looking for dates on some of these. <gasps> Peanuts! Birds of the World. Fantasyland. Disneyland. And a bunch of loose ones. So I've done pretty good with these in the past as far as selling these if they're in good condition. We did pick some up over the weekend where they're not in good condition, so I don't know. I just might throw those in with these, but we'll see. All right, a couple books. The Cat. I just thought it was a cool cover. When was this published? I don't even know. Published in Canada, 1988. It's a very simple publishing, too, so I don't know if it was self-published. It says, Copyright Center St. John. Oh, <laughs> this is the second one with best wishes. It's autograph copy. Huh, that's kind of cool. Lives in St. John, New Brunswick. I grew up on a central farm in New Brunswick. Huh, well, there you go. It's the second book I found in the last week that's autographed. And then I found this one, The Witch and the Flying Saucer. Um, another nice vintage book. I didn't look to see what. This is 1969. This is the third printing in 1977. But these are great for Halloween. I saved these and I put them out at the Pink Elephant, which is the antique store that I have a booth at. I sell those um, at Halloween time. And the people like these because then they'll put them in displays, you know, or have their kids read spooky tales or something. And then the only other book I got was this one. It says, 
A Trip Around the World Through the Stereoscope. It's from the 1920s. And what I find interesting is it talks about, 1926, talks about the stereoscope and what it does and all that kind of stuff. And then it has this like a legend of different numbers and what it shows. So I'm wondering if this book didn't go along with like you buy the stereoscope and a set of, of um, slides and this book went with it to explain the slides. But I can't find this book anywhere. Either on Abe Books, on Google, or on eBay. So that's why I grabbed it because I thought, well, maybe it's a really rare book. And somebody with a stereograph machine might want it. I always like it when I can't find something. It's frustrating when you can't find it, but I like it because it means it's rare, it's special, it's not commonplace. Picked up this little frame. It's a nice vintage frame. The paint is peeling off of it, but to me it just gives it great little aged patina. And speaking of frames, I picked up this piece of artwork. I paid a dollar for this one. I'm going to peel this tape off because it's going to peel off some of this gold on the frame. It just never fails. Somebody tried to sell it at a garage sale. Fortunately, it didn't peel off too much. So that's good. And this is a print. It's not a oil painting. It's just... Yeah, it's just a print. This, is, this would be uh, similar to what they would call an oleograph. An oleograph is a picture that has a texture to it. It's a print, but they put texture on it to make it look like it was painted. You know, that's got that impasto from painting it. Um, so that's what this one is, and it is quite dirty. That's why it's very dark. So if you'd see behind the frame here, the colors would definitely brighten up. But it's just got a great vintage look to it. And I like florals. Plus the frame is worth the dollar I paid for it. And then this is an original piece of artwork. It is a watercolor. I think ink and watercolor. The name is actually hidden under the mat. It's right there. And again, this frame is very dirty. It'll brighten up a little bit. But it was kind of a, it kind of reminds me of the Middle East and kind of a Bedouin type of, because these I believe are goats. And this is a dog. And then it's like a family travel, you know, herding along and more desert area. So I just thought it had a great feel to it. The people actually don't, I don't know how well you can see, but they're, they don't have painted faces. They're blank faces. So it's got this kind of a uh, um, almost foreboding feel to it. it. It it definitely interested me. So it'd be interesting to see if I can um, open that up and see who the artist is. All right, this is the coolest. Well, I think of my yeah, uh, my favorite item from today. Look at this teacup. So you guys know I've been picking up teacups lately, but it's a square plate. That's the beautiful, really dark, it's almost that British green, you'd call it, um, and gold. Same with the cup with a leaf pattern on it or floral pattern. But look at that handle. <laughs> That's intense. And this is a Bav made in Bavaria, the Alka Kunst in, from Bavaria. And their prices vary quite a bit, but this is um, in perfect condition. I couldn't believe I found this in the bins, and it's not one chip because it's very thin, very fragile. And I'm surprised I didn't break it on the way. <laughs> yes, I succeeded in not breaking something for a change. And, and this particular company, their prices vary. I mean, they have one set that sold for $75, a teacup, saucer, and an, what's called an underplate. There's another plate to it, which this may have had um, because it would have been a little larger square plate and it would have, so you would have set this so that those points would have been out that way. So there could have been another plate to the set, but in this case, it's just the two. It's easily a $20 set, if not more. So I will probably put this on eBay for 35 to $40 just to see if there's any interest in it at that price. 
and go from there. Um, speaking of stuff manufactured overseas, this is made in Sheffield, England. It's a knife sharpener and it is very well used. Um, and it is quite old. It is brass and this is horn and it's made by A.J. Jordan, Cast Steel, Sheffield, England. Um, and this is a very large one. So their knives in particular can be very valuable. This particular knife sharpener, I don't know. I'm thinking I could list this for 30 to $40. See what kind of interest we get. Oh, there's my other ornaments. I just found them. <laughs> I buried them under other stuff. So we'll get to those in a little bit. Found this stone trinket box. It's got some beautiful inlaid stone on top. A little almost daffodil style, I would call it. No markings or anything. Looks kind of like a granite. But I thought it was kind of cool to pick that up. Found a little bracelet. And a little ring. Again, it's just costume. Nothing fancy. And then I found this little key ring with an umbrella charm on it. I just thought that was a great. So I picked that up. So that will go to my little junk jewelry drawers. Jars, not drawers. Vintage Santa. This is the plastic Santa cup. Made in Hong Kong. So these are $10 items. He's actually in really good shape, except you'll find in these older items where they use the glue, the glue discolors over time. So that's not, that's just the original glue that they never cleaned up when they made them. That's how quickly they, uh, or some other kind of manufacturing defect. Anyway, oh, and this plate, it's got a bit of wax in the bottom. Somebody must use it for like a candle holder. But this is made in Palestine. It says handmade Hebron Palestine Al Salam glass and pottery. So again, this is not an expensive dish, but I picked it up because I thought, oh, that wax popped right out. There's the whole design. Um, I never saw one of these before. We saw a lot of pottery at the Pink Elephant. So I'll put this down there probably for about $15. Because just unusual to find that and speaking of unusual these are vintage mm, buttons hand painted you can see the eye hooks on the back so <laughs> I won't say they're well painted but they're painted hand painted dogs I just thought they were fun so that's why I grabbed them um, and then, oh, there's another thing that's my second favorite item today. Found this is this is a Royal Tara, made in Ireland, uh, double-handled vase, beautiful little piece. And there's the label on the bottom. And again, this is not super expensive, probably a fifteen to twenty dollar vase, but just a nice little find. Had to save it. This is a local piece. Thunder Canyon. This is Valley Fair, which is kind of like the, the Six Flags. Valley Fair is a local uh, theme park here in Minnesota. So it's a deck of cards and a score pad says made in Hong Kong. So this is a nice vintage piece. I didn't even look to see what the cards look like. What? Oh, they're just, this is just a regular deck. What well, would be fun if maybe I could find a um, local a deck of local cards that I could put in there. I have some new packs of cards off to look and see if any of them are local Minnesota. Even if it just says Minnesota and put it in there, that might be cool too. So then I found this box. It says vintage porcelain doll with poodle. I'm like, okay, let's see, is that what's in there? And sure enough, here's the vintage girl and her dog. And of course, he's made out of like styrofoam and flock. But isn't that just awesome? It's got the sticker made in Japan on the bottom. So it doesn't have a, uh, you know, manufacturer name like Lefton or Joseph Originals. This is just a little one, but they're both in perfect condition, which is the best. So we'll put those back in the box. And this one I will be listing on eBay. So look for eBay for that item. So that's that's pretty special. Found a 
Pyrex dish with the old orchard pattern. No lid. Looked all over for the lid. No lid. Which reminds me, do I have a lid for it? I'll have to look. I might have a lid that might work. Um, this needs a little cleaning on it. It's just got some scuff marks on the corners. Um, and yeah, this is a $15 to $20 dish. 49 cents at our bins. Copper teapot. This one is made in Taiwan. It's in wonderful condition. And uh, that's why I picked it up. Because a lot of these I find that the bins are in terrible condition. But this one's in great condition. Uh, again, $15 to $20 for this guy. But I also found this one. This one's a little different shape. It's beautiful. This one is a Gregorian made in the USA. Solid copper. Still has the original label on the bottom. This one is a $25 to $30 teapot. My original thought was to put them down at the Pink Elephant, but I think I'm going to list these on eBay. Um, I might put this one at the Pink Elephant, but this one's definitely going on eBay. And I found a pair of bookends. Heavy, cast metal. They're marked APT-New York. And there's only a couple of this particular manufacturer, there's only a couple of their bookmarks, bookends out there. And none of them are this design. It's kind of like this. Um, let's see, what does he look like? He actually looks like a Torador. And the reason I say that, first I thought he was more like a, you know, early American style. But if you look, he's got a, a, a cape or a, you know, like the red cape that they would do. He's got a baton and he's got a gun. So I think he might be one of these bold Torador guys. I don't know, I have to look him up and do a little more research on him. Napkin holder. This is, a, <laughs> I was surprised, it's a Teleflora napkin holder. That kind of surprised me. But it's brass, brass is a good seller right now. And I picked up some vintage patterns. Um, these are more what are these, they call these, printed pattern, printed in California, Co dance costumes. So these are different dance costumes. These are some formal wear, definitely from the 60s. There's some more. And these all <laughs> reminded me kind of of costumes too. And some more formal wear. And somebody suggested, because they're all open, you know, to use these, because I use tissue pa paper to wrap stuff up, so to use vintage patterns to wrap stuff up too. And I, you know, so I picked them up thinking I might do that. Okay, and then here's the other <laughs> vintage eggs. They were in the egg carton, that's why I kind of missed them. But again, they're all shiny bright. These happens to be solid colors, blue, one green, one pink, and one silver. Well, we sell these for one to two dollars at the Pink Elephant during Christmas time, and they sell. People like picking up these size shiny brights. And then I realized I have one more thing to show you here and I'm going to have to uncover it because I kept setting things on top of it without knocking everything down. So bear with me just one minute. All right. One more. Okay. It's this wool blanket. It's a beautiful, look at that beautiful dark red it's in perfect condition. No holes. There's no label on it either. I wish there was a label, but there's no label. Um, so I couldn't say it's a vintage wool blanket. But wool blankets are, especially in Minnesota, are always desirable. And we have people coming in the Pink Elephant looking for wool blankets come the fall. So I will probably hold on to this until the fall and put it out at the Pink Elephant. Um, and again, one of the things I keep thinking of is my commentary on our current state of economy is people are going to be looking for less uh, whimsical items, shall we say, and more functional items, especially if, and I keep hearing these supply chain issues going on, you know, people are having trouble buying certain things. So you'll, you, you can't go wrong when, when you deal with the necessities like kitchenware, you know, clothes, blankets, 
things like that to uh, even teapots because these are totally usable and uh, functional so why not use them and dishes right whereas they won't be so inclined to want to just buy decorative Christmas collectible stuff I still think will be a fairly strong market this year but some of the other stuff maybe not but anyway thank you guys so much for watching catch you next time